What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? Do you nerd one for all and all for one gaming expo pickups? Yeah. We got there. Let's <laughs> see what you did there. This is Tom and Lacey collecting all the things, searching from here to there, finding. Comic book tables, house Legos, and action figs, retro gaming, amiibos, and image prints. Watch as they collect them all. Tom Lacey collecting right now. Yes, hello, I am Tom. This is Lady Lacey. This is Do You Nerd, the variety channel where we cover all kinds of things that we're interested in. It could be video games, it could be toys, it could be comic books, anything. Plus, we love to cover conventions such as the All-in-One Gaming Expo. This was their very first year. And before we jump into this plethora of pickups that we have, <laughs> holy cow, good luck to you guys for sticking with us. Uh, I just want to say, for a first-year convention, I was impressed. I was going to say, you would never have known it was its first year, no. how well it ran. Numerous people we spoke to, actually, vendors and attendees alike, kind of had that same sentiment. They thought uh, like third, fourth, yeah. maybe even fifth year, like totally first year. I was really expecting kind of a swap meet yeah. sort of yeah. setup, you know, which is Just fine. Just a couple of tables but, maybe. But uh, what we got, wow, so many vendors. There were lots of people there on hand. There's an arcade. Yes, oh yeah, uh, you were having some fun with one of those uh, rhythm based games. I think Musica, where you were like, you had to press it. And After then, like, I figured out it. how to get into it and figure out what I was doing. Yeah, it was fun. But was yeah, fun. Uh, so tons of stuff to do. Plus they had a whole section set up just for tabletop gaming. So if you want to get some D&D action, if you just want to play some board games and everything, I mean, so much stuff to do because they were covering anything. Yeah. Gaming, all in one. All of it. Let's try something else. Maybe we should put the dice away before I take them away. <laughs> and it was a family-friendly event. Plus, they had us out to do a panel, and Show Me Retro joined us, so that was a lot of fun. Norm, the gaming historian, was there. Nothing but praise yes. for this thing. Is there anything that you would like to see in the All-in-One Gaming Expo moving forward? I would like to see a cosplay contest. Ooh, that could be fun. I really do think that cosplay contests bring in cosplayers which bring in more people because a lot of people do go to the events sometimes just to see cosplay some people go to an event just so that they can show off their most recent cosplay and then they stick around and buy stuff you could bring in some cosplay guests which could be fun too yeah as you said mm -hmm. brings in a different demographic so you know it really is working more towards that all-encompassing yes. all-in-one so all right, it is time to jump into some pickups. We better get going because we have a lot of stuff. We do. First of all, where they were located, where you got us a hotel, there was a fantastic shopping center nearby. It was a fun shopping center. With a center. Super Target. Super Target. Uh, <laughs> so your first pickup wasn't even from the convention. No, it was not. You found this guy. It was a Hocus Pocus Billy. Yeah, I, I love the NECA, like, Toonie Terror line, and so then when they came out with the um, Hocus Pocus line, I sadly have been slow in getting them, but he's my very first one of of the Hocus Pocus line, because he was my favorite. So I, I look forward to getting all of them, but yeah, that was my very first pickup of the trip. <laughs> oh, Billy. But there was also a half price books yes. in the area. So Which the you were super night, excited to go to. Yeah, uh, I've seen lots of other YouTubers pick up some really cool stuff from half price books. I've never got to check out one of the stores myself. This was my first time in there. And I did find something tripping the rift, the movie. I didn't even know that there was a movie. I don't think I pointed it out to you. You did, yeah. I, I knew about the series, and I used to watch the series, but I didn't know anything about the movie. It's the unrated Ooh. movie. Uh, there was another version there that, I guess, because there was like a bonus disc, yeah. it was uh, twice the price. Yeah. And honestly, I didn't care. I didn't get it for the value. I got it just to watch <laughs> because it's, it's an insane show. Have you checked out Tripping the Rift? And what do you think? Don't don't let the kids watch that one for sure. <laughs> and like many of those other YouTubers that have gone to Half Price Books, I did find a game. Capcom Classics Collection. The games, though, that it had listed on here is really what sold me. I mean, you've got Ghosts and Goblins, Legendary Wings, Bionic Commando, a lot of those classics right out the door. You've got Final Fight, 1942. I mean, classic shooter right there. Street Fighter 2. If you wanted to just spend an afternoon 
playing some of Capcom's <laughs> best, this would do it. Oh, and uh, check it out. Complete. The manual. How nice was that? It's even a PS2 case because it's got, you know, the memory card. Right. Answer that. Everybody knows I'm eclectic, right? <laughs> so a little bit. I find the weirdest things. I found these weird little things. I got Deadpool Squirrel, Santa Deadpool, and Banana Deadpool, I guess. Is it Banana Deadpool or is it Peanut Butter Jelly Time Deadpool? Maybe it's Peanut Butter Jelly Time. Peanut Butter Jelly Time. Also, I found a notebook, which I know if you've watched any of our videos, you're thinking, Lacey, why did you buy a notebook? Pretty sure you have enough stationery from all the loot yeah. crate boxes. I have no idea why I wanted it. I just did. It was this really cute leather Zelda notebook. It just kept saying, buy me, buy me. So I bought it. You know what? Future Tom, Lacey, <laughs> let's show that off. It's going into the 1000 Zelda collection. Pop in that secret found music. And Mom. there's the number. Speaking of eclectic. Plushies! <laughs> and the weirdest plushies. Yeah. Well, you know, I like medical stuff. And, you know, we've had COVID. It's a thing. So now I have a plushie to commemorate it. And it's also fun that I can throw it at people and go, hey, now you have COVID. <laughs> Whatever will I do? Now it's okay, I though. I've got the COVID vaccine. Oh, now you're cured. We're good to go. <laughs> But no, I absolutely love the giant microbe line, and so I just thought it was super cute that, you know, in light of, of COVID and everything, look, we have the COVID vaccine and the COVID virus, and you're just rubbing COVID all over your face. Mm. That's not a smart practice. <laughs> Guess I should have wore a mask or something. <laughs> what? You mean like this? <laughs> Hey, Neo, get over here. Hi, kids. How are ya? No, I'm still recording. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Enough of our shopping in the neighborhood and everything let's get to the convention pickup so all in one gaming had a lot of great vendors there were games as far as the eye can see there was also a lot of great creative stuff <laughs> one of the first things that i picked up were these 3d printed pokemon figures i mean these are so freaking cute now i did get two of them for lady lacy i got her an eevee and is this guy lapras okay my favorite pokemon ever i, I don't know pokemon so <laughs> so i got those for her and then the other two i actually got for sega head who also likes eevee and i believe this snorlax is essentially his spirit animal i, believe so, I yes. think he's made that claim a time or two <laughs> but these are really well made they look fantastic they're they're nice small pieces perfect to to put out on display anywhere and they're they're just cute speaking of 3d things, oh geez i got myself a 3d handle oh. right no an eye, guys. there's more ready it's a dagger isn't that awesome that is so cool he had daggers and he, the guy had swords i wanted to go a little smaller because i'm more petite so i thought i would go for a sword all i can say is if the highlanders had these they wouldn't have to wear those big-ass trench coats anymore. You know, where they, like, hide it in the trench coat? No, they just take one of these, and then they've got, you know, look, I've hidden my sword away in a pocket. But then I'm like, ooh, I need to cut your head off. Come here, let me cut your head off. I'm going to get it's so perfect. hurt with this thing. That can be only one. Hey, future Tom, go ahead and bring that Zelda secret found music back, because we have a kuko and this was a lovely little perler display i love how he's got like a little yeah, grassy a patch, little patch to sit on yeah. so that he can stand upright he looks great this table had all kinds of fun perler pieces on there but i had to go with something that represents my love of legend of zelda don't don't hit it yeah i'm gonna be very don't hit it very nice see <laughs> see we're very nice okay okay <laughs> I found the cutest little keychain. It is Spyro playing a Switch. I just think he's adorable. And then even cuter is this like star key ring instead of, you know, the normal, the circle one. But I just, I love Spyro. He's a dragon. That is true. So. You do have a few good Spyro pieces. I do. So. 
this is an interesting little piece, a Tiger Electronic, a little bit different. It's X-Men, but it is a barcode battler. Mm. Long, long, long ago, because I'm old, very long ago, I had the cards that went to this. I think I had the unit itself. At one point, I believe I got rid of this, but I kept those cards. Now I have to see if I can find I them. Out where you put them. They're somewhere <laughs> in this house. <laughs> But this was a really interesting thing. This slot at the top, you would run the cards through and you could use different characters to do different attacks. So I got this, it's still got the battery cover. Which is a surprise. Right? And I thought it'd be fun just to have it. I mean, we love our X-Men stuff. Yeah. And to see if I can find those cards. Plus it's, you know, little it's Tiger Electronics. So, you know, I mean, who doesn't love those? We love X-Men. Speaking of handheld devices, I have no idea why, but I have a weird little affinity <laughs> for these things. I never want to play them or have a desire to play them. I just want to collect them when I find them cheap enough. And this one was super cheap. Name that tune, because everybody is clamoring to play Name That Tune. And what's so great, also great about this one is it's got a removable cartridge in it. So you can buy more cartridges to play more Name That Tune. The gentleman that sold this to us, he said they're not the tunes that you would yeah. expect. It, we're <laughs> it's talking like very, yeah, royalty <laughs> free stuff. Yeah. So uh, let's make sure you know that turkey in the straw jingle. Select game. It's very good condition, not beat up, hardly any wear and tear on it. So I don't think anybody really played it. Oh, yeah. Well, after the first <laughs> time that it played a song that they had no idea what it was, they're like, forget this. I did pick up a video game, but not even for me. I just wanted to show off, pick this up for a buddy of ours. This is Saga Frontier, one of the PS1 Square offerings. The thing is complete. The disc is in incredible shape. I love how inside on the booklet here, you have a list of some of the other PS1 Squaresoft <laughs> offerings. Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy Tactics, Bushido Blade, so much fun, and Einander, a tremendous shooter with a great soundtrack. Man, Squaresoft was killing it in the PS1 days. So look at that, bought a game for someone else. There was a really cool D&D &D dice booth that I just went gaga for. I had to reel it back a little bit because I could have spent a ton of money. I did get this really cool, you can use it like a keychain, hang it off of your bag, your dice bag or whatever, but it looks like an old timey leather book. But the cool thing about it, it's got really good magnets on it. Open it up and it's filled with tiny dice set. I just thought that was really adorable and cute. And you know, you never know when you're just gonna need to carry some dice with you. Oh, hey, yeah. If you lived in a D&D &D world and dice had power, I mean, yeah. this would be perfect. This is perfect. This is the, your travel version. Roll for initiative. <laughs> and I really, really liked Tom's idea that he had of all of the different coasters with the names of the D&D &D characters on there. So, you know, when you have someone come over, you give them their, their coaster of their character. So he had them in a set. So I bought the whole set, even though I don't play D&D. I don't even know which character I would be, but it would be fun to maybe look into it someday. And he also had dragons, so of course I had to get some dragon of coasters. Course. So I picked out two of my favorite dragon coasters, and if I ever get to run across this booth again, I will also buy his other pack of... Um, the status ailments? Status ailments, thank you. Yes, because I thought that was clever too, where you were like, we'll just throw the status p at people. So I, uh, I really hope to see this guy again. The other great thing about these coasters are they are cork, which cork is really good about absorbing your water and not letting it run all over the table. So it actually is a good reason to have a coaster. Whereas we've been finding some other coasters that are either rubber where the water runs off of it onto the table. So yeah, it kind of defeats like, the purpose. Thanks. Or they're cardboard and you just ruin it. Cork is very good, very easily to uh, wipe off, dry, and it not really get messed up. So I love the fact that they're made out of cork. 
One last note is the booth that had this. They are actually a charity organization, Play to Beat Brain Cancer. It's a nonprofit organized and operated to primarily pay the medical expenses for patients suffering from brain cancer and tumors who cannot afford the treatments, medicines, or surgery. So it's really, really cool that not only are they putting that love of tabletop games, D&D, and so forth out there, but they're also doing it for a really good cause. Oh my gosh, there was such a great table just blanketed with Famicom we games. We spent a good amount of time there. We really did. <laughs> they were amazing prices too. Yes. The man running this booth, he knew his he stuff so well. I would pick up a game and he'd be like, oh yeah, that game is about such and such. That's more of an RPG. That's yes. something that you could actually play more of an arcade style game. Arts what won you over? So many pretty colors. Having that kind of knowledge, yeah. especially for Japanese games that I can't read them, I'm kind of having to go off what you're telling me to play, that was incredible yeah. and definitely made some sense. It helps you choose a game based on what you want to play versus me choosing a game based on the color and the label. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really like this one because it was just some weird, it's like there's a flying toast, the guy's writing a toad and he's trying to lick this little girl over here there's a one-eyed velma chick running around a one-eyed um dog so i mean all kinds of weird stuff and then you got a house in the background but he told us about this game and it was real actually intriguing because he said the whole thing based on this like ancient haunted town that like all of these weird things happen in it so it's like it's actually based on a real town so it's like ooh, that sounds fun oh yeah and so we bring the evil japanese spirits yeah, yeah. into our home I think this was another one that you were actually interested in, the whole Mickey Mouse. Yes, appeal. I liked the whole Mickey Mouse thing because one, I love everything Disney, and two, it was just it was just kind of fun. I, I wanted to, you know, see what a Disney game was like. I picked up a couple of cartridges just because of the size, so they're oversized Famicom cards. This one, the Famicom Jump. Now he did say that this was more of an RPG, which surprised me because the characters on here, I was thinking like a fighting game. You have a smattering of anime heroes here mostly from the Shonen Jump magazine. And I just thought it was really cool to have a cart like this because look at how ultimate of a crossover this label is. Now, this one was interesting. I believe it is an RPG, so there's probably not a lot of chance of me playing it, but here's what I love about it. It has a slip cover <laughs> for the bottom, so you can actually protect the contacts of this cart. And it gives it a nice uniform look, mm -hmm. too. The art, it really feels like uh, you've got the dollar store version of Akira Toriyama with his Dragon Ball and Dragon Warrior stuff. At one point, I did ask him, recommend a game that I can actually play. Let's steer clear of visual novels <laughs> and RPGs. And he recommended Challenger. So the cover is great already, and it tells you a lot of what's going on in the game. I mean, Princess Leia is in a bullet train and she gets whisked away, and you're this Indiana Jones looking dude throwing knives at uh, birds and avoiding lightning as you do. Mm -hmm. But the point is, it actually looks like it'll be a lot yeah. of fun, and it is playable, so there's that bonus. The other thing that I really liked about this guy's booth is he had a system set up. So no matter what game it was on the table, yes. you could take it over and check it out. One, to make sure the cartridge worked. And two, to see if it even looked like something you'd be interested in. And that is a beautiful, brilliant selling point. Oh, absolutely. He even threw in a freebie for us already. I love what's going on. This is a very epic cover here. I mean, look at this bad guy in the oh, back. Yeah. Of course, that kind of gives me some like Mighty Max vibes. The fun thing about this one was he wanted to throw a free one in and he goes, what color don't you have a lot of? And I was like, I don't know. I kind of <laughs> like the purple ones. Those are cool. So he went through and pulled out all the purple ones. And then we went through our list and figured out what purple one we didn't already have. <laughs> so that was, that was kind of fun. He, he catered to your <laughs> he taste. How sweet. <laughs> Well, I bought a bunch of earrings this time. Apparently I had earrings on the brain. I guess so. I got these really cute Joy-Con earrings. You see a lot of, you know, controller earrings or I've seen whole Switch earrings, but I don't see a whole lot of just Joy-Con earrings. So I thought that was really clever. I absolutely love food earrings, eclectic earrings, earrings of things that I like. And they're the mini brands series of things. People are 
turning them into earrings, which I'm absolutely loving. So I, of course, picked me up some Hurricane from the Hard Rock Cafe. Wait, do you like Hurricanes? I do love Hurricanes. I'll be right back. The one thing I hadn't seen yet was them taking the toys from the mini brands and turning them into earrings, which is also a whole heck of a lot of fun. So I got me some Rubik's Cube earrings, which I know Comic Rob will love because he loves Rubik's Cube. I love my Nerf guns. So I picked me out a fun set of Nerf gun earrings. And because I was missing my baby boy dragon, I got me some lizard earrings. Oh my gosh, she was missing <laughs> that dragon so much. I, I may have looked on the camera once or twice or a hundred times. It's probably fairly well known at this point that I'm not much of a handheld gamer. Uh, most of them kind of kill my hands. And generally, I've never really found one that's all that comfortable anyway. But I did pick up something, two things for the PSP. I got the Night Warriors UMD, the Alpha and Omega. So based on the Darkstalkers franchise, these are just a couple of anime. I don't think I've ever seen these out and about in the wild before. And I kind of kept thinking about them, like after I first saw mm -hmm. them and asked him about them, they just hung in my mind and it felt like I would have regretted not walking away with them. So I went ahead and got them and I mean, you know, hey, I mean, Morgan there, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. I was trying to look down her case. Uh-huh. <laughs> You've been naughty. I picked up a collector's item that I've really had my eye on a couple of places I've been to, Soul Calibur 5. The main reason I really liked this is because it looks like an old timey leatherback book, which I absolutely love those. This one is in the best condition I've ever seen out and about. So it's got the, um, the slip cover and then the beautiful casing of it in great condition. Open it up, there's the soundtrack, you've got a really cool book. Inside the book, you've got some concept art of each character, which is really, really cool. A little bit of descriptions of them. You've got the making of Soul Calibur and the game. Complete, Complete. might I add. Look at that yes. manual and everything. I was really excited because they wanted an amazing price, cheaper than I've ever seen it anywhere. So I was like, yeah, we're getting this. Yeah, how cool is that? I mean, we always love our big box editions. But the ones that are very themed out yes. too, you know, it's more than just a big box. Like you said, it looks like this gorgeous leather bound book. How cool is that? <laughs> you know, something that we love to collect, but have absolutely no space for? Prints! Art prints! Art prints. <laughs> uh, I got a really great one here. This is by Ninja Monkey Studios. And this is such a great picture of all of the Mushroom Kingdom ladies. You just like daisies. Um... Daisies. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not going to deny that. She's but, got some really nice stems. But the girls are out playing some golf. Princess Peach, your favorite. Rosie. Princess Daisy, and even Pauline is there. But this was just a fun piece. I like whenever prints do that, uh, you know, kind of out of the box yeah, thinking, of you know. It's like they're, they're doing something else. And yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, ruling a kingdom, a galaxy, being the mayor of a city stressful yeah. you need to take some time out and yeah. golf <laughs> well i picked up some stickers i got a cute little sonic the hedgehog i got a sticker of my favorite berry controller for the ps4 a sticker of plessy with all the people riding it because i didn't know about this little dinosaur until tom started playing mario 3d world and adopt a stranger pet little baby dart and then I bought this from another booth. I thought it was freaking adorable. You've got Bowser going out on a date and you're his date. Oh, well, I guess I'd better get ready. You don't keep the king of the Koopa away. I mean, look, he's even got a bow tie and a piranha plant flower and he did his <laughs> hair all nice. Shout out to Show Me Retro who actually hooked us up with this tremendous 
switch case. Now he was selling this, but ultimately because some pin marks got on it and everything, and it was the end of the second day, he's like, guys, just, just take it. <laughs> I think it's because he knows it's going to a good home and it's, it's sitting here. It's never leaving this place. It's Mario. Look yeah. at that. It's, it's, it's his almost like a denim so cute. fabric on the bottom too, which is great. And inside, look at how wonderful these partitions are. So of course you've got a place for the main switch itself, but then pockets for your power adapter, controllers, the dock, anything mm -hmm. that you want to fit in here. I mean, this is such a great little carrying the case. The best thing about it is every single bit of this is all Velcro, so you can take it out and reposition it however you want. Or if you didn't want to use it for a switch carrying case, what were you thinking? I thought it looked like a lunchbox. So. Wouldn't that be perfect? <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, not insulated, but hey, who cares? Well, just eat your lunch early and then be sad when two o'clock comes by and you're hungry. Oh. It would not be a convention without me getting a plushie. I'm surprised at the plushie you picked out this time around. There were some really cute ones there. There were a lot of really cute ones. There was just something about this one that drew me in. I absolutely fell in love with the lavender color, first and foremost. That's the first thing that caught my eye. Second thing that caught my eye was these adorable little wings he's got back here. I absolutely love it. The wings are super cute on here. They've got little um, wire in there so you can position them so they can be big out flapping or laying against his chest or you can kind of bend him in i thought that was a really cool cute little design he's got lovely little toe beans <laughs> toe beans on there and he does have some horns and a little star on his forehead because you know he's a star that's what we're gonna that's, go with that's what it what's his name he is um lucifer <laughs> oh my gosh the pun <laughs> <laughs> lucifer the cat and it is from the picky witch is who creates these and the artist designs these plushies and there's only a limited amount of them out there and they're all there's a different line of them so i just thought that was kind of neat stop looking at his butt well it's got his little tattoo on his butt he's got a tramp stamp <laughs> whenever i try to look at a tattoo on a butt you slap me well yeah are you telling me that woman logic isn't a thing it's a thing it doesn't make any bloody sense, but it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me whilst I smack him. Yeah. Ah, she bit me! She bit me! <laughs> Tom, help! We got this really cute Tamagotchi pin, and the pet inside is Luna from Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon! But we just thought it was really cute. It was, um, didn't they say it was a custom design, I believe? I think so, yes. Yeah, so it's super cute. Love it. And I, I'd buy a real Tamagotchi look like this. Not only do you love your plushies, but you also love your toys. I do love my and toys. you found a toy. I did. I found this really cute, and it was a great price for this Sonic the Hedgehog little playset. And you can put him on the stand, and he does the loop-de-loop. -loop. Or, as the person we bought it from goes, it boing-boings, boing-boings. I'm not sure why he had to tell us that about the spring. How great is it having these play sets based on gaming franchises, though? You know, and especially when they're interactive like this. So with the boing boing, with the rings <laughs> that are movable that you can collect. And then the fact that you can actually use the loop-de-loop. -loop. I mean, these play sets are so much fun. And in all honesty, they really do make just great display they pieces. They do. They really too, do. So the last thing that we got, this was something that we saw pretty early on. And again, it was something that kind of rested in the back of our minds. Mm -hmm. We kept thinking about it. Biggest thing being, where would we even put it? I think we're going to try to go for a door. Yes. Lacey likes that one. Uh, Rob would like that. Sega would like that. But, but Lacey's here right now. We got a lovely Spider-Man print that has Venom and Carnage. Some Mary Jane action, some Felicia Harding, and Spidey's right there in the middle enjoying every bit of it. Normally we don't go for prints so big, again, because of the, mm -hmm. the whole lack of space. But I think once we get this up on a door, it's going to look really cool. It's just so dynamic. It is dynamic. I love the, the details in there, and their faces are really good. The proportions are really good. I mean, Yeah, even, those proportions are really good. Well, sometimes, you know, you've got really big thighs or big arms or something on the girls. I don't know why. But you've got little freckles on Mary Jane. You can see the fur here on Black Cat. I mean, it's just, it's great. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, when I pointed out Black Cat's fur, you told me to stop looking. Bitch, you know, I'm a slappy. Bitch, you know, I'm a slappy. Bitch, you know, I'm a slappy. 
Whoa. I really didn't think we got that much until we got home. There you go. <laughs> uh, needless to say, the barrel was full. Yes. All right, so tons of great pickups. We got some games, some, some fun Japanese games, great collectible games, some retro Tiger Electronics stuff, weird things like the UMDs. You found so many crafty pieces from earrings to 3D created items. You got you a plushie. You got you a toy. We got something to represent our comic book passion. We even got stuff for tabletop with little dice. We got some coasters. I can honestly say we really did get all in one. I mean, they literally think we hit every single topic we really did <laughs> so nerdlings please if you have not already check out our floor tour video of the all-in-one gaming expo and get a good idea whether or not you would like to check them out i really think you should yes. there's a lot yes. going on there they put on a great show once again thank you so much for having us out as panelists it was an honor to be a part of your first year we already cannot wait yes. for the next one and to see where this convention goes and grows from here Okay, I'm just about out of voice. Guys, leave some comments down below on any of the stuff that you see here today. Let us know if you are going to check out All-in-One Gaming Expo next year, and we will see you there. Bye, nerdlings. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and TikTok. We'll see you later. Don't do it. Do you want to use this? <laughs> You know where this is going. <laughs> I'm out of here. Good luck trying to cut that one out, Tom. So I found the... Okay. Stop saying so. We're so's. We said that in the so, panel. So. So. Okay, ready? <laughs> so. <laughs> and if you've ever... Ready? There was also a lot of great creative stuff. Thanks, Toby, for tapping the camera. <laughs> I know, I just saw go, ka <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Maybe you should know your stuff, Tom. Uh -huh. right, ready? Yes. Yeah. So you can buy more discs. Not discs. So there was... <clears throat> ready? So. I know. So, 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 so. <laughs> <laughs> We do say so a lot. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Stop saying so. So I mm. <laughs> should should I have a, a counter going? A counter. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> Take a shot every time we say so. Oh god, don't <laughs> you'll be dead. So <clears throat> there's another one. Take a shot. <laughs> That's such a terrible noise. So so I feel good about that. So <laughs> why have I never noticed until this? Video.